Not the way we wanted to start this road trip. After the crazy win we saw yesterday against the New York Yankees, the Jays hit the road to take on the White Sox, then the Brewers. And it started with Jose Barrios taking the hill today. And historically doesn't do the greatest against the White Sox. Today he wasn't even good. He wasn't even serviceable. He gives up a run in each, at least one, in each and every inning he throws. Only goes four innings. Gives up an RBI double to Andrew Vaughn, who torches the Blue Jays and did yet again today. Tim Anderson comes into score. It's one nothing for the Chicago White Sox. Top of the second inning, Ryan Mel Tapia. He answers with a two-run bomb. In comes say Oscar Hernandez, and the Blue Jays are in front. It's 2-1. Great stuff. However, right after that, Josh Harrison... Hasn't hit a home run this season. They said it right before the pitch. Then Jose Barrios throws him an absolute hanging breaking ball right down the middle. And he crushes it. Deep to left center and it's gone. It's a two-run bum. In comes Berger. And they take the lead right back. It's 3-2 for the White Sox. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Luis Robert. Two-run shot. In comes Andrew Vaughn. And just like that, it's 5-2 for the White Sox. And then, oh yeah, we're not done yet. Bottom of the fourth, Andrew Vaughn, again. Hits a solo bomb off Brios. He gives up three home runs in four innings. Gives up six runs, all earned, in four innings. Nine hits allowed. Strikes out one guy. That was ugly. And the Jays go down, well, after, I mean, it was 6-2 at the time. And then we go to the bottom of the fifth inning with David Phelps on the hill. He gives up an RBI ground to Reese McGuire, Jose Abreu scores. Then Adam Engel hits an RBI single. AJ Pollock comes in to score. And now it's an 8-2 ball game. And it's like, you can't get zeros from your starter. You can't get zeros from your reliever. They've scored runs in each of the first five innings of this game. And you trail 8-2. But then the Blue Jays do what they did in the, in the last game, right? You know, you get you get some runs coming in. You're like, oh, maybe, right? Say Oscar Hernandez, it's an RBI double. Bowen Vladi score, but I think it was on an error. He ends up at third base as well. Espinal brings him around on, a, on an RBI ground out, making an 8 5 Blue Jays. We move ahead to the bottom, the top of the ninth inning. Last ditch effort for the Blue Jays. Kevin Biggio, it's his first home run of the season, a two run shot, making it 8 7. But that's all she wrote. You try another comeback on back-to-back -back nights, but you can't do it. But you just you can't put yourself in this hole often. The 8-3 comeback against the Yankees is an anomaly. You're not going to see that very often. And to try and do it on back-to-back -back nights, it's just not possible. And the Blue Jays pitching staff as a whole now. Before it was just, well, you know, bullpen's not great. You need some more arms, this and that. Your starters have not been very good. Kikuchi's been basically unplayable over the last month. Actually, well, his month of May was phenomenal. June has been horrendous. You know, Alec Manoa had a tough time there in his last outing against the Yankees. Obviously, a bad fourth inning, and then I believe it was the fifth or sixth where he gave up an RBA double to Clipper Torres. And then Kevin Gosman, we all know what his last few starts have looked like. And, and Barrios had three really good starts, but albeit not against the biggest opponents. Now you're facing a team in the White Sox who historically hit him well and are feeling pretty good about themselves offensively lately. And they beat him around like crazy. You know, then you reuse gone and stripling. You just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, the ERA is great. I get it. He had two really good starts against two really bad offenses. And he faces the Yankees and doesn't do the greatest. The starting pitching staff has been really shaky the last time through, last few times through for the Toronto Blue Jays. We all know what the bullpen is, where the way they've been lacking. Pitching overall has been awful by the Blue Jays in, in really the month of June. Now, how many, like, I, we haven't seen Jordan Romano a lot lately, and, and a lot of the high leverage guys have been saved lately. You know why? Because either the Jays are blowing out teams for the most part, or they're getting blown out. And now you lost 8-7 today. You can't count it as a blowout. But in the fifth inning, you were down 8-2. You just can't let that happen. And Jose Barrios has to figure it out. Because this team, this organization, gave him the dough. Gave him the money. And rightfully so. Because his career numbers, like through six years in the big leagues, has been consistently phenomenal. But for some reason, so far this year, he's had a few spurts of good, good play. 
but there's been a lot of bad ones. And today was one of those bad ones for Jose Barrios. His line goes as so. Four innings pitched, nine hits allowed, six runs, all earned. Struck out one guy and walked one. It wasn't very good. But even after he left the ball game, and it was you were down 6-2, which felt like eh, not very good. You want zeros after that to keep your team in the ball game, right? Give them a chance to come back in this one. Well, David Phelps came out there in that fifth inning, allowed two runs, made it eight-two. Now, not saying that was the backbreaker because giving up six runs over four innings is just not going to cut as a starter. But as a bullpen guy, it's a team effort, right? You want to pick up your guy. You want to pick up the starter when he's not having a good outing. And Barrios definitely wasn't today. So you want, as you're, if you're David Phelps, you want to go out there and you want to throw up a solid zero. He gives up two more. Now, after that, it settles down a bit. Albeit you were down quite a bit, so it really didn't matter. But Trent Thornton goes two innings of two hit ball, no runs. And Matt Gage throws you a scoreless inning uh, in the bottom half of the eighth inning. They gave you three shutout innings, but the problem was you were de- you you allowed eight runs already. You know what I mean? And I'm not and like people are gonna say, well, if Phelps didn't allow that, you know, they they would have won the ball game. They would have won seven six. Bijan would hit the home. Look. They're all if ands, or buts, you know. Obviously, different pitchers would have come into different situations, right? Trent Thornton probably wouldn't have been out there if he had the lead. It would have been someone else out there. And who knows what would have happened. So there's so many moving parts at that point. But you got to save as many runs as possible. And the fact that didn't happen for David Phelps today, it definitely hurts. But the more pressing subject is Jose Barrios. It really is. You know, offensively, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. went 0 for 2 today, but he did walk twice, so he got on base two times. So, uh, again, not looking over anxious, so I like what I saw from Vladdy. Teoscar Hernandez had a couple doubles in, t- in, in the game today, two for four with a couple runs scored, a couple RBIs. He had a good night at the dish. Kevin Biggio looked good in the nine hole, two for four with a run scored, a couple RBIs. Obviously, on the two run shot that he hit in the ninth inning to bring, it with, to bring the Jays within one. The team overall only had eight hits in the ball game, and they struck out ten times. They just, I, I don't think the approach was there at times, you know. And we always talk about while well, their approach at the plate, you know, going up there. What are they looking for? Are they looking for a strike? Are they looking for a specific pitch? Are they are they flailing at bad pitches? Are they being over aggressive? Like they went up there today with no approach, and yeah, they scored seven runs. Don't get me wrong, but again. When you don't score anything, you know, when, when those, you score two runs through the first five innings, and when you're down 8-2, or yeah, 8-2 at the time, you kind of need the offense early. And there's so many moving parts to this. The Blue Jays pitching staff, Barrios, Phelps, they weren't good today. That's the straight up thing to talk about, but Barrios is definitely the pressing subject because of uh, that. And the breaking ball is a problem today. Luis Roberts' home run was a fastball in the inner half that he didn't get in enough. And a good hitter like Robert facing a 93-mile-an-hour fastball is going to crush that. And a hanging break ball, I don't care that Josh Harrison hasn't hit a home run this year. You throw a hanging breaking ball to anybody, they will crush it. Whether it's going to be a ballpark or an extra base hit, a ringing single, or a ball that leaves the ballpark, it's going to be hit hard. And you can't allow it to happen. And Brio said it quite a few times. You go to the at-bat previous, right? The, I believe it was right before the Harrison home run. I can't remember who it was that got out. And it was, was it Adam Engel? Anyways, it was, again, a hanging break ball in the inner half, maybe a little bit more in, but he just missed it. And it was a fly ball deep to Rymel Tapia on the warning track. Next batter, Harrison, gets another hanging break ball. This time, he don't miss it. And I'm like, man, that's not Barrios. Like, what is happening here with this guy? So, I don't know what else to tell you guys. I really don't, because I, every time we think he's found it, and dead arm's gone. Velocity's back up. Lots of bite to his breaking ball. Gets a lot of strikeouts against the Orioles. We're like, damn, this guy's really found himself again. And then he gives us one of these. And we're like, has he really? Speaking of has he really figured it out, Kevin Gosman. And he takes them out tomorrow in game two of the three-game set. Gets Dylan Cease. who didn't pitch in Toronto because uh, he didn't get his shot. So he's one of those guys. But uh, Kevin Gosman takes the hill for the Blue Jays, looking to figure it out. I don't, I don't, I really don't know how else to put it to you guys. Just, just figure it out, and he's gotta be better. Because in the finale, you got G Lito versus Ross Stripling, and we don't know how that's gonna go. So if you're Kevin Gosman, 
you know, you got to pitch well. Because if, if, he, if he gives you another performance like what we've seen lately from Kevin Gosman, look at the back-to-back -back days, right? With Barrios making a boatload of money, over $100 million. And then Kevin Gosman making over $100 million. And both guys giving you terrible starts. I mean, it's ugly to look at if you're a Jays fan. And if you're in the management, you're seeing this, knowing the money you dished out. It's ugly. But we'll see what happens. 8-10 first pitch there in Chicago as the Jays take on the White Sox there in game two of the three-game set. Right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and not the game today, because let's be honest here. It was ugly. It was terrible. There's whatever words you want to use. Uh, smack the like button if you guys enjoyed the video, at least. Smack, uh, hit the subscribe button if you guys are not already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. What you like, what you not like from today's game for the Toronto Blue Jays. The Twitter link is down below, so follow up, send me a DM. Do all that great stuff. The Instagram link is also down below, so follow up there. If you guys have not done so already, and I will talk to you J guys, Jays Nation, of course, tomorrow night. Game two of the three-game set at Roger, uh, Roger Center in Chicago, taking on the White Sox. Gosman Cease is the pitching matchup, 8-10 first pitch there. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And, like, definitely not the game today because it was, no, a lot of false hope late in the game. All right? So thank you guys. We'll talk to you guys then.